I love her with all my heart. She's my kindred. Every ounce of creativity I have in me, although my dad probably gets credit for some, but quite a bit of it comes from, I'll give you all those kudos on Father's Day. Um, lots of that comes from my mother. My mom is in every color, every design, every thought, every artistic idea that I have. And I just love her so much. She's just the deal. I forgot to say happy Mother's Day to my mother-in-law. She, she's not here, is she? Is she at the first service? We'll have to tell her. Sorry. sorry. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I definitely say happy day to my son, who the only reason I am a mother is because of one awesome, um, and I do not exaggerate this, perfect in my eyes and heart man that is sitting right there. Wave, wave your hand. There he is. Handsome as ever. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, several years ago, <clears throat> Tyler used to say, like, you know how kids do sometimes if they get irritated at you and you're irritated with them and there's just irritation and going on. And he used to say sometimes, I think a red-haired kid's going to show up at the door. <laughs> like it wasn't mine or something. I had an emergency surgery and they just handed me a child. They're like, here you go. <laughs> I, I was um, uh, put out and I was in like I said, in emergency surgery. So when I came out and I woke up, they said, here's your baby. And I was like, thank you. I mean, I mean, they could have given me a girl. They could have given me another kid, but they, they handed me you. And he, he, like, on certain days, he would joke and go, some red-haired kid's going to show up at the door. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to be like, I knew it. And I'm like, you're mine <laughs> and his. <laughs> okay. Um, several, several years ago, I was watching TV. And I can't remember the name of the show, but um, I remember what it had on it. It had uh, the world's greatest guitar players. And so Jerry was out working in the garage, and I was inside, and I was like, well, the world's greatest guitar players? Well, I, I, don't, I don't see what that's about. So I sat on the couch, and one guitar player after the other would come come up and play, and they were from, from all over, and they played acoustics and electrics and all kinds of stuff. Things, and they played different styles, and I was just, this is, a, this is awesome. Well, they kept saying that the world's greatest steel guitar player, the world's greatest, was coming on next. Okay, I'm ready for it. So two hours later, <laughs> the world's greatest, okay, right. Jerry came in, you still watching the guitar players? I am. Because the world's greatest steel guitar player is coming on. And he was like, okay. And so he'd go back out to the garage. Four hours later, and, and, and a lot of good guitar players. A lot of good guitar players. It was a, a joy to watch. I went and put my jammies on and came back, you know, <laughs> keeping it in for the long haul. And Jerry came in from working outside, and he goes, that's still on? I'm like, the world's greatest steel guitar player is coming on, and, 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 and they built it up. <laughs> I, can't, oh, I can't wait. I mean, why wouldn't you want to know? I mean, how good is he, you know? So Jerry went down. He got all ready, you know, not, you know ready, and came back, and, and uh, he sat in the recliner, and I had been for four hours adjusting position, <laughs> and reclining, and, you know, and I went horizontal. Uh, no, don't, no, see, okay, now, don't steal the, don't steal the punchline. <laughs> I, okay, now, if you know me longer than 24 hours, you'll know that if I'm a horizontal, I am asleep. <laughs> well, Jerry came in, and he sat at the recliner, and, and so my, he could only see my head, and he said, are you sure you ought to be laying down like that if you really want to see the world's greatest steel guitar player? And I was like, oh, no, no, this, no, I'm awake. I've waited all this time. The next thing I knew, I had a little tap on my shoulder. He said, come on, honey, we need to go and go to bed. It's getting really late. And I'm like, no, I, I, the world's greatest steel guitar player is coming on, and I got to see him. Jerry goes, he was on. He was really good. Let's go to bed. <laughs> oh, but wait. How good was he? Jerry goes, he's really good. I'm like, I, four hours, and I still don't know what the world's greatest guitar. The best was yet to come, and I missed it. In God's kingdom, there is a, the best is yet to come. Would you look at your neighbor and in a very serious face, very serious face, 
Would you say the best is yet to come? Would you look at your other neighbor in their face and with as much enthusiasm as you can muster on a Sunday morning church service, could you say the best is yet to come? <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep that in mind for a play that I do next. I was watching to see who really did that. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for time to be in your word. I pray, Lord, that you would open our ears to your word, open our eyes, and God, fill our hearts today, Lord, with hope. The best is yet to come in this life and definitely in the next because of you. We love you today and we give you all praise. Everybody said together, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to be starting a new habit, and I want to ask you, and I mean like seriously ask you, if you would start it too. And that is speaking the blessing over your life of the best is yet to come. No matter what you go through, no matter how bad the trial, no matter how good of a day you're having, the best is yet to come. And I mean in this life and in the next. Speaking a blessing over your life really works. And because I live with the pastor, I get privy a lot of times to what he might begin to preach on. And I know that in our home, Jerry and I, like our new thing we're doing right now is we are really concentrating on speaking blessings and not curses. And so we keep catching each other going, don't speak a curse over that. Speak a blessing over it. Speak blessing. I was sick recently, had a really bad cold, and usually whatever I have, he gets. He didn't get sick, and he goes, you know, I think it's because I've been blessing my immune system. He's been, go he's been going around the house going, I bless my immune system. I am healthy. I am healed and healthy. I am blessed. My sinuses are blessed. My he's been going around, and he has not been sick. I wish he had told me that the two weeks before I got sick. I could have been doing that, but I wasn't doing it. <laughs> There's power in your spoken word. There's a story in the Bible about a woman, and I want to tell it to you. She isn't even, oh, you got quiet. <laughs> she isn't even given a name. She's called the Shunammite woman from where she was from. Now, the Bible says the Shunammite woman was very wealthy. And so her and her husband, every once in a while, the prophet Elisha would come through their town. And the woman said to her husband, he is a man of God. We should make a room, the Bible says, with, with a bed, a chair, a table, and a lamp <laughs> that's what it's like. uh, for him. So when he passes through, he'll have somewhere to stay. So that's what they did. Well, Elisha was so excited that they had, had done this for him. And he said, well, what can I do for you? And she said, oh, nothing, nothing. I'm just happy to provide this for you. Well, Gehazi, Elisha's um, servant, can't think of the word, Assist, assistant, <laughs> assistant evangelist. He said, I know that she can't have any children, that she's barren. So Elisha said, this time next year, you're going to have a baby in your arms. And she said, oh, no, don't get my hopes up about that. Please don't get my hopes up about that. He said, nope, this time next year, you're going to be holding a baby. And that time the next year, she did. She had a little baby boy. The Bible says that that little boy grew up, became a child, and one day he went running out to his father out in the field, holding his head and yelling, my head, my head. The father said, take the boy back to his mother. The boy was taken back to the Shunammite woman, and she held the baby, the, the little boy, on her lap until noon, and the Bible says that the boy died. This part of the story, I wish I had time to talk about some more. The Bible isn't super clear, unless I missed it, that she told her husband that he had died. But what it does say that she did is she went to her husband and she said, I need to go see the prophet right now. And he said, well, it's not the new moon and it's not the Sabbath. She said, I need to see him right now. She told her servant, let's get on the horse, don't slow down for anything, ride as fast as we can. They rode out to where Elisha was. She, the Bible says she wept bitterly. And in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 26, 
it says, run to meet her and ask her. Listen to what he asked, Elisha. Told his servant, run to meet the woman. Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. Everything is all right? Now, I looked that up in several different translations, and it's the same thing in every translation. It either says everything is all right or it is well or it didn't say fine because they, they, they didn't use that back then, fine. <laughs> but she confessed with her mouth, everything is all right. Why would she have done that? Things weren't all right. Her own child was dead. But she knew, this is what I believe, she knew the power in what she spoke. The story goes on. It's a great story. I hope you can read it when you have time. Elisha went to her home, and it's a very strange healing story. He laid over the young boy, breathed onto him, and nothing happened. He got up. He walked, paced around the room. He tried it again. He laid back down, breathed on him, and the Bible says the boy sneezed seven times and woke up. The Shunammite woman was faithful to speak, not just new age positive, but to speak what she knew the power of God could actually do. She was even confessing over her own life. When you speak blessing over your own life, sometimes the conditions don't look like that, obviously. She was confessing that beautiful, wonderful thing. It is all right. And the reason why it's all right is because I know to come to God and I have come to the man of God and I know what result that will produce. And that's how it is for your life. In Proverbs 18 and 21, the Bible says the power of life and death are in the tongue. This translation, the tongue has the power of life and death in it. The best was yet to come for the Shunammite woman. And she knew the best was yet to come, not in anything that someone could do for her, but in what God could do for her. Now, there's a second woman in the Bible who also had a son. And this woman isn't given a name either. She's called the widow of Nain, N-A-I-N, identified again by her city. Well, one day, Jesus and his followers were passing through a town. And right as they were passing through, a funeral procession comes through. Of The Bible says a widow whose only child had died. In Luke 7 and verse 13, it says, when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Don't cry. They told you she's a widow, and now her only son, my husband and my only son are dead, and your advice is don't cry. I can't stop crying. All I've done is cry. But Jesus had shown up on the scene, and although she didn't know it, the best was getting ready to come to her. I'm talking about in this life. The Bible says the Lord saw her, and the Bible says that the Lord, that his heart went out to her. And in some translations, it says he had great compassion on her. And in another translation, it said he overflowed with compassion. And that's how the Lord is when he looks at you. He sees you. The Lord sees you. Every detail about your life, your mind, your heart, your body, the things you care about, the mountains, the valleys, all the things you go through. And he is filled with an overwhelming compassion for you. Now, th this story would have freaked me out at best. Jesus walked up to the casket and put his hand on it and spoke and the boy inside, this is what the Bible says, and I believe what the Bible says, the boy inside <laughs> sat up, it's a coffin, y'all, sat up and started to talk. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I would think everyone's immediate response would have been, ah! Woo! It would have been a mixture of like, shock, and then like, Her plans that she had were done. 
her husband, her only son. This is not the way that she thought life would go. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, um, I'll try to get out of your way a little bit. May we read this out loud together? Are you ready? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that day, that's what happened to her. You know, they say that life is, I'm going to give an illustration that, you'll, that we'll understand because this is where we live. That life is not like I-69, all straight and uneventful. Don't, don't veer off my example. It's a euphemism for life. Don't talk about how it has a bunch of potholes. Meaning it's straight. It doesn't curve very much. It's Indiana. Things are straight. You know what I'm talking about? That life is not like that. Life is more like a Tennessee state highway. (laughs) That is like, like going around the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's up, it's down, it's all around. Is your life like that? Is your life like that? Life has its ups and its downs. But God is going to be faithful to you no matter what. And when in your life, I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through, to speak over your life, the best is yet to come for me. When you are in the darkest valley, knowing that all trials, all the things we go through, they're only temporary, And even in this life, you have ups and downs. The best is yet to come because of Jesus. Those two women I told you about had sons that were given back to them in this life. They had like, I can't imagine thinking it's over and then you get your child back and off you go living, living in the house with joy and all that. But there is a wonderful story in the Bible To me, other than Jesus, she's the best person in the Bible, I believe, and that is Jesus' mother, Mary. In my humble opinion, Mary, outside of our Lord, was, I believe, the most suffering character in the Bible because of what she watched him go through. You know, most women can take what they go through, but they can't take watching their child go through something. That's worse than anything, isn't it? Mary, many scholars say that Mary would have known the prophecies regarding Jesus. Mary would have known that the Messiah was coming by the way of a virgin birth, according to Isaiah. If anybody knew that Jesus was born a virgin birth, it was Mary. Mary knew exactly who he was, which kind of says a lot about with Mary. At Jesus' first miracle with the whole turning the water into wine, remember how that went? They ran out of the the stuff they needed. (laughs) And Mary looks at Jesus and basically says, you need to do something. And Jesus says, okay, this is a direct quote, woman. That's in there. That's hilarious. Woman, it is not my time yet. He probably didn't have an accent like that. (laughs) It's not my time yet. Okay, you know like when your kid argues with you and you just kind of ignore them or they're not doing what you tell them, so you just ignore them and make a power move over your child? (laughs) She did. She all ignored what he said and went over to the guys and said, just do do whatever he tells you to do. And how could she not have looked back at Jesus like, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, completely like stuck him in the corner, like, you know, like, well, I'm going to have to do something now. I'm going to have to do something amazing. I know, what's his first miracle, his idea or her idea? I don't know. But, <laughs> you know, I don't know. That will be fun to ask. <laughs> if there's anybody that knew who he was, it was her. If there's anybody that was convinced of it, But I can't imagine the day that she watched him on the cross, 
crucified, what she may have felt that day. She was at his birth. She was throughout his whole life. She had other children. She was at his death. And in fact, he loved her so much, even in his torturous death of hanging on the cross, he said to John, woman, <laughs> must be what they say to the mother, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. In other words, Jesus, while he's dying, is still trying to take care of his mom. If, but I, I kind of wonder if that wasn't her worst day. But her best day was coming. <laughs> her best day has become our best day. Because we all know the story. Jesus came from heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, but the story does not stop there. We wouldn't be here. The gospel wouldn't even, it wouldn't be effective if he had not risen from the dead. Amen? The best was yet to come for him, for her, for us. A while back, I wrote a song. Oh, I don't have it marked. That might not be a good thing. Um, called... The best is yet to come. And if I had had enough foresight, I'd make sure we had this written and would have sung it to you today, but we didn't. So these are just song lyrics that are in my journal. Um, it's like I only have a few little chords to them, so I'm gonna, I want to read it to you, but it doesn't rhyme. You'll get the gist of it as I go along. Here's what it says. Death's dark shadow hushed the light of the Savior of the world. Creation sighing. Angels crying for the Savior of the world, but the best was yet to come. Down, down, moving, light consuming all the caverns of hell. His nail-scarred hand extended, the keys were given to the Savior of the world, but the best is yet to come. Holding the keys of sin and death forever, there's now one more thing to do. Creation singing, heaven ringing, gravestone move, move, move. The best was yet to come. And here's what it is. He rose. He rose triumphant over cross and grave. Jesus Christ has made the way. He rose, he rose. The best is yet to come for me in life and death. I now am free. The best is yet to come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. You might. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You will be the biggest complainer, the biggest whiner, the biggest negative. I believe you'll actually even, even have more physical difficulties when your mind is set on earthly things. But the day that you ask Jesus into your heart, is the day that your citizenship changed. I am an American citizen, but the day that I asked Jesus into my heart, my citizenship changed up to heaven. So no wonder the things of the earth feel like we don't really belong here. Do you ever feel like that? It's because your citizenship is in heaven. I want to remind you today of what you sang. Here's what you sang today. When we were going through our songs, the songs this morning were picked on purpose. And here's what they said. For every mountain that is high, he is higher. In other words, no matter the mountain, the best is yet to come. No matter the valley. For every burden that is great, he is greater. For every valley that is deep, he is deeper still. That is a line that Corey Ten Boom said, who was kept in the Nazi concentration camps. She said, there is no pit so deep that God is not deeper still. Our promise is Jesus. 
Our answer is Jesus. All to him we owe everything. Our savior is Jesus. Our future is Jesus. All to him we owe. And the tagline could be put on that song, the best is yet to come. You sang, I will walk through the fire. I will walk through the darkest night. I will walk through the flood. I won't be overcome because the best is yet to come. That's not in the song. I added that. I will walk through the trial. I will walk through the valley of fear. I will walk through the storm. I won't be overcome. And here's why. Here's why. For the Lord, he is able. He is faithful. He is higher than the mountains that I face. Best line in this whole song, in every season I will press on. Whether I'm going through the darkest valley and the plans I have are not working out and the things that I think how life should go isn't working out. I'm sure the Shunammite woman, when her son died, that was not in the plans. When the widow of Nain, her husband, her son, as they were carrying him in the casket and she was a widow, that was not in the plans. But God says, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God will not harm you. God will bring good things into your life every day. He'll keep bringing the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. When you're in the valley, all, all things you go through are temporary. You're going to be soaring back up on the mountain pretty soon. But even on your best day, understand the best is still yet to come. You sang, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. I've had times I didn't know right from wrong. Every Christian says amen because we're on a journey on this thing. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come. My trials come. My trials come. To only make me strong. No matter how deep the valley, no matter how tall the mountain, you must make it to the other side to see Jesus. This life is short, and the things you go through are temporary. The best is yet to come. I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. I thank God for the storms he's brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I would never know what faith in God could do. The best is yet to come in your life. We sang, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Some people go from trial to trial to bad thing to bad thing to trial to trial. I don't know why some people, it just seems like their life is harder than others. But I want to tell you, this life is short and it's temporary. Fill up your mouth with praise to God. Fill up your heart with thanksgiving. Confess and declare over your own life, the best is yet to come for me. The best is yet to come for me. And it's not because of me. It's because of Jesus. It's because I am blessed in this life. I am blessed and given new mercy every morning because of Jesus. I am blessed in the next life because of having Jesus in my heart. John chapter 14 and verse 1 through 3, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. I will come back. Jesus is going to come back. And if we allow the trials and the things we face in life to cancel that out in us, to cancel out the good seed, the work that Jesus is doing in us, it'll be a lot like me trying to watch the steel guitar player. The best didn't come for me. It came for Jerry. <laughs> it didn't come for me. 
But I know because my faith isn't in myself, I know because my faith is in Jesus that the best is yet to come. Comfort yourself with these thoughts. You know, as much as I love Jerry, I love mom and dad, I love Tyler, I love my sissy, Cheryl, as much as I love all of them, my life here on this earth is very short compared to eternity. I get a lot of comfort in imagining heaven and in thinking about that and in keeping my heart right. I'm afraid of God. The same creative God that made heaven is the same creative God according to the word that created hell. I want to make it. By thinking about heaven, keeping my mind on that, it keeps me away from sin. I'm a normal person, but I mean like it keeps me on the path, you know. I want to uh, pray for you today, and, and you may remain seated. Um, we do something with the band and the choir, and it's, it's a prayer model, and I would like to do that now before you leave. Um, and you don't have to re repeat after me or anything like that, but I want you, if you will, to pray the same thing, topic I'm praying. You'll catch on as we go. I don't want you to stand up because I don't want you to think about your legs. Oh, you do that. I do that too. I want you to be still. You can pray out loud. You can whisper your prayer. Um, I'll, I'll be praying for myself and I'll help you pray different directions. Today, the best thing I could tell you I always ask the Lord, what's the best thing I could tell him? There's so much to tell you. And I only preach like once a year. <laughs> I got lots of stuff to say to you. <laughs> I got like a whole year's worth. <gasps> but I really felt the Lord saying, and as politely as I can ask you, look me right in the face. God sees you. God is filled with overwhelming compassion towards you and he wants to help you in the valley or on the mountain keep hope in your heart that the best is yet to come he sees you and he's filled with compassion towards you thank you Jesus every head bowed and every eye closed and you're praying for you I'm praying for me so let's start let's begin to pray right now a cleansing prayer Lord, I pray right now, Jesus, that you would forgive me of all of my sins. And you, you pray that over your life. God, I just pray, God, you would forgive me, Lord, of anything I have said or done. Anything, Lord, that would come between me and you. God, any selfishness. God, uh, making my plans be idols. Putting my will and my ways, God, ahead of you, God. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. Wash me with your blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. Purify my heart, purify my mind, Lord. God, forgive me and cleanse me, Lord, that I would be white and pure in your presence, Jesus. Lord, I pray that my mind would be stayed upon you. Will you pray that over your own life right now? Lord, I pray that my mind would be stayed upon you. That, God, my mind would be, God, not on earthly things, God, filled with just the news of this earth and all of its trials and muck and the things that are down here and, and my own plans and my own ways. May my mind be focused more on you. God, you are such peace to me. You are, um, you are satisfying to me, and you calm me down when I'm in your presence. And when I'm not in your presence, I'm agitated, and I'm nervous, and I'm fearful. And so, Lord, I pray you keep my mind stayed upon you. Lord, I pray you would fill my heart with hope. Will you pray that over your own life? That the best is yet to come. Lord, if I'm allowing days that I just sink into selfishness or depression and, and that I can come out of it myself, Lord, I just pray, God, Lord, I would speak over my own life, Lord, that the best is yet to come. This ain't all there is to it. God, I pray that I would encourage myself and keep hope alive within my own heart, watching and waiting for you, dear Jesus. 
And Lord, I pray that you would fill me with your spirit. Will you pray that over yourself? Lord, fill me with your spirit today, Jesus. Fill me to overflowing today. Fill me, Lord, less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. That when other people are around me, it's less of Paula and more of Jesus. That, Lord, they would want to know you. That they would feel your love. Lord, I pray you would fill me with your spirit to stay strong, God, and to be faithful to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me all across the house and in unity and, and you're, you're not, in a shame, uh, not in a shamed way. You're not in a shamed uh, congregation. May we lift our hands to Jesus all across the house by faith. And will you begin to praise God and let's let the house right now be filled with thankfulness. Hallelujah. All across the house in your own way about your own life and the things that God has done for you. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for pouring out your blessings. Thank you for sheltering and taking care of us. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you, God, for all of your good blessings. Thank you, Lord. We fill God our mouth with thankfulness, Lord, and our hearts with thankfulness, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all of your good blessings, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone said together, <laughs> amen, amen. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. I made it through the whole day, and I did not tell one man happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Every year, I end up telling four or five men Happy Mother's Day just by accident. You know, I have mother. <laughs> I made it through the whole day and didn't do that. I want to encourage you with something before you leave. And I'm not saying this just because I always say it. I really want you to hear me. Stay people of prayer. If you're in the car, if you're at the mall, if you're at the store, wherever, pray. If you don't know what to pray, just say Jesus. You, Jesus, help me <laughs> over and over and over, and he will. He, get, he gets you. Pray. Be people of the word. And you can get the word in you a lot of ways. You need to eat bread. You need the word of God in your life. And I want to encourage you so much to find someone and tell them about Jesus. Be active. Be, be proactive in that. You have the answer that could even maybe help somebody that they wouldn't go to hell, that they would turn to Jesus. Don't be nervous or embarrassed. God will help you at just the right time, and you'll be okay. God will really help you. Find someone to tell them about Jesus and to tell them that he loves them. Jerry and I love all of you very much, and that's just not words. We really, really do, and we pray for you faithfully. We're so happy to see guests today that have come with your family. We welcome you and are happy that you're here. And we just speak great blessing over your life. We love you. Have a super fabulous day. Wait, the best is yet to come. It's one more time. The best is yet to come. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>